Hello guys, I'm making this video because I have an announcement to make. I made a scene. Uh, and this video is about the process of making the scene from having the roles to making it happen. Uh, not in a very, very specific way, but how my journey about um, making the whole scene went. My patrons know about this. I told them that I was making a scene. They, they, were, uh, they knew it was coming, but nobody knew when. Uh, not even me, because I, <laughs> I sent it to, to, to the factory and then it takes a few days to be made and then they call me just when it's ready. So it's been two weeks since I sent the whole thing and now it's in my hands and I have it here. So I want to talk to you a little bit about it. When I came back from Japan, I have a bag of film that I shot. I shot about 30 rolls over there. So I shot a lot of Ektachrome 64 in 120. I shot uh, HP5 Plus at 400 and at 1600. I shot Acra Vista and Portra, I shot one roll. And well, uh, Vision 3 500T, uh, I also shot a lot of it. So I came back home with a lot of these rolls. And the main problem when you are like me and you want to uh, shoot a lot of film and you try a lot of film, different stock films and, and different developing methods, the big problem is developing. So I arrived with black and white film, slide film and color film and uh, color film that needs to have generate removed, which is the 500T. So uh, when I arrived, I had this big stack of film and I needed to sort it out in different categories. So for example, I had to develop all the um, ectachrome first because that's the one that takes a longer time to develop so I develop all the ectachrome uh, and the slide film and then I set myself upon the task of developing all the color film and for that I used the tetanel kit now the tetanel kit was given to me by the guys at tetanel they give me a brand new kit because uh, the one I, I was using it was it was really old by this time so I used the one that they gave me I made a new batch of chemicals um, I have a video in which I explain how to make the batch of chemicals. I was kind of nervous when I made that video because the first time that I was trying the tetanel kit, but now that I have more experience, it's just, it's quite easy. It's super easy to make actually. So I made the whole kit uh, and then I developed the, all the films uh, that require to be developed in C41. And uh, yeah, it was, it was not that hard at all. It was time consuming, of course, because I was developing a bunch of roles at the same time. So I was using the CP2 machine. I got a good deal on the CP2 machine um, like um, two months ago or something. And so I've been using that machine to develop when I need to develop a lot of color film or a lot of um, slide film at the same time. I use the CP2 machine uh, with a big tank that holds uh, six reels of 35 millimeter or four reels of 120. So I develop everything there, everything regarding color film and uh, slide film. And then I develop the other black and white films by hand. So by sorting out these things, I was having a scope of the amount of pictures that I had to make this in. Uh, there were a lot of them and then the scanning process began. So I had to scan everything and put everything on the computer. And when that was sorted out, the main thing was giving the um, the whole scene some kind of narrative without involving words. Now, words are the thing that I work with most of the time. I also work with images in this channel, but uh, since I am no longer working as a professional photographer anymore, I'm just working as a screenwriter uh, or as a writer in general most of the time. Um, I had to think about it, organize the pictures, which should go first, which formats, because I shot with... Um, square format and regular 35 millimeter format and the expand format and i needed to have some kind of narrative regarding not only the pictures the content of the pictures the style um, and the colors or the lack of colors in some pictures and also the format so there were a lot of things to juggle around in this whole thing um because i don't know organizing a book a photography book or a photography scene in this case might sound simple might sound like, oh, you just take the pictures, develop them, scan them, put them on the computer and send them to print. But um, but that's not the case. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be, you know, thought about. Um, which picture goes like goes along with which other one, which will go on the left of the, of the page, which will go on the right of the page. Um, what content will the pictures be? You know, are both pictures contain more or less the same uh, image or is, or do they talk do they communicate in a way or not if I change the order of the pictures does that 
uh, affect the whole order of the scene. In my perspective or how I thought this scene, uh, it does. There's this uh, quote that I really like about Jean-Luc Godard in which he said, if you can remove uh, a, a scene from a movie and put it in any other place and it works anyway, then that scene is pointless. Uh, and, and I was thinking about that when I was making this, not exactly on that quote, but I was thinking on that area. Like I need to arrange the scene in a way that if you move a picture from one page and you place it in some other place, it will look out of place. So the whole scene is organized in terms of um, formats, colors, composition, content and whatnot. So I, I'm, I'm super proud about the organization of it. Fran helped me tremendously. Um, I gave her all the images in the order that I thought were correct because I know which images uh, actually can go along with which other ones, but I don't know how to place them exactly in the picture uh, to make it look interesting or pretty or eye-pleasing. And since Fran studied graphic design, she was, man, she was a great help. So she helped me design all of this. Um, and that's how several hours ahead came to be. This is the scene. And I'm, I'm super proud about this. It's, it's, a, it's a limited run. I made just one edition to see how, how it goes. But uh, it's just, it's, I would love to say it's just a scene, but it's more than a scene. It's like a small book to me. Um, I put the same amount of effort in doing this than A Parade of Strangers, not in regards of the amount of film that I shot, but, but how this was composed uh, it's it's really it. I don't know. I'm super. I'm super proud about it. So some images are open like this as you can see and um, You know some other images are like this. There's one image per page um, and as I was saying it depends on the the format of the image the content it all varies it's it's there's a lot of thought put into this uh, and I'm really happy about how everything turned out so yeah, I think some images uh, actually have some kind of dialogue with each other and the way everything's composed. Uh, there was a lot of uh, time involved in making this. Um, not only my time taking the pictures and, 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 and selecting them, organizing them, uh, but also Fran's time uh, designing this. So it's, there's a lot of love, a lot of work uh, put into this, a lot of effort. So um, I'm really happy about this. It's gonna be uh, right now for selling on my Etsy shop. The link is in the description if you want to go for it and you want to check it out. Um, as I said, there's a limited print run, uh, of course, because I can't, I, I'm not a, I, I don't own a printing place, so I have to <laughs> print limited runs. So there's a first edition. I don't know if I'll make another one. It depends on how good it goes. Um, so a lot of you have asked me about the uh, another edition of A Parade of Strangers. Uh, for now, I just want to give it a go on this one. And if there's a big, big demand for another edition of Operative Strangers, I might go for a third edition. But for now, all my efforts are put into this. So that's it. I wanted to let you know what was going on and let you know that it is up for sale. So if you miss on it, do not blame me because I already told you and that's uh, basically all I had to say. I wanna uh, thank you so much for your support. Next week is gonna be another shoot film episode uh, with actually oh uh, with this camera so i hope you're excited as i am to see how this goes i'm trying a new ectachrome film uh i'll tell you all about it in the next episode but i am i am quite excited about that also since since i'm already talking about stuff that i'm doing and, and how you can support the channel i will reorganize everything on patreon and now you can support the patreon raffle uh, i'm giving away one camera or one photographic equipment um, it's, it's currently only being cameras and giving away one camera every month to everybody who pledges $10 or up. So that's what I'm doing. If you want to support the channel and be part of the raffle, that'll be super awesome. The link to the Patreon will also be in the description and I will stop talking. Thank you so much for everything and I will see you next week. And that's it. Keep shooting, guys.